What's going on guys, KY Nakai the Creative, and if you're a Sony fanboy like me, that means that you might have picked up the Sony a7 IV, which is a brand new mirrorless camera that's been added to the line of Sony cameras. Now, that being said, there are some people that have a couple of problems, a couple of things that they consider deal breakers with this camera, but I find a lot of those things can be fixed by some of the settings that you either don't know about, forget to turn on or off after you've bought this camera. So in today's video, we're going to talk about some of the settings that you need to know after you buy the camera and how to set this thing up to make it the most efficient filmmaking tool and probably photography tool that you're going to be able to use in your bag. Getting right into it, there's a setting called focus breathing compensation. And basically what that means is it mitigates a lot of the problem with modern photography lenses. I've talked about this before, but basically what ends up happening is when you use your higher end lenses that are made for photography, they're great color, they're great sharpness, but when you change from focus from one thing to the other, you do see a little bit of a bump in the corners, which might be off-putting when you're doing video. Now there's a setting on this camera that actually fixes that, that you just have to go and turn on your focus settings, which will get you a little bit of a crop in your image, but it does get rid of a lot of that focus breathing issue. A lot of your higher end lenses like your G Master or your G lenses is where you're going to see the focus breathing compensation option going to be open for them. Now some of your cheaper lenses, some of your off-brand lenses might not have this feature to it. So if you notice that you can't find it in your menu settings or it's not turning on, just know that it only works for a certain amount of lenses, which you could probably check on their website. So we're going to talk about the elephant in the room and probably the main complaint I've heard about Sony cameras and that is the overheating issue. Now a lot of people talk about this overheating issue in the sense that it might even be a deal breaker for them for this camera when they're shooting in the higher end 4K codec or even in the 4K60 that's offered on this camera. To mitigate this issue, go into your menu settings, you can actually turn the high temperature power off to a high setting on your camera. Now, when you get this camera right out of the box, it's set to normal, which basically means as you're using the camera, there's a certain amount of time where because it's processing so much high end quality information, it's going to get really, really warm. And in order to kind of protect itself, it'll shut off when it gets too hot or overheats. Now you could actually set that threshold as to when your camera recognizes when it's time to turn off to a higher setting, which gives you a much longer time before that camera overheats. Now you might find overheating even when it's in the high setting, but in order to do that, you have to be in a very warm place and be recording for a very long time. So a lot of you guys that don't have the longest takes and the longest clips in the world, you don't have to worry as much about your camera overheating and it actually solves a lot of those problems for a lot of people. Now next we're gonna talk about is our memory card options. And there's a bunch of memory cards that you can get for your cameras nowadays. You can get V90 cards, V60 cards, V30 cards, Class 10s, CF Express Type A and B. There's a bunch of different memory options you can get for a bunch of different cameras. Now the Sony a 7 IV uses four memory cards in particular, and depending on your video settings will dictate which cards are more appropriate for the setting that you're going to be using. Now if you're gonna pick up something cheap and basic, you can go and pick up a V30 SanDisk card, and it's going to be able to handle a lot of your lower end codecs. Something like your XAVC-S, your XAVC-HS, in certain shooting modes, you'll be able to use your old cards that you pick up from Amazon that are fairly cheap. You can buy a lot of them and you'll be able to get great footage and it'll still record on the card. After somebody that uses slow motion in the S and Q mode that's offered on this camera, you might need a V60 card. A V60 is gonna be able to handle your normal 4K slow motion options on it as well. So you don't necessarily have to go and get a more expensive card if you're just gonna be using the normal 4K modes, but a V60 card, especially if you can do slow motion, is gonna come in really handy and it's gonna work a lot better than your V30 cards, which I actually don't think work when you're using S and Q mode. Now next is going to be your V90 card. Now any of the previously mentioned shooting modes that you're using before is going to work with a V90 card, including using the all intra codec. Now the all intra codec basically means that it's gonna be a higher resolution version of the 4K or 1080p that you're going to be using on this camera. So basically this camera does have a bunch of different resolutions, but it does have one that has all intra frame, which is supposed to be higher quality, which is supposed to be great for motion and also gonna be great for post-processing as well. But V90 cards generally accepted are one of the cards that you're going to need in this camera if you wanna use the majority of the shooting modes that the a7 IV offers. Now they are a little bit more pricier. They're actually a lot of bit pricier, but they do go a long way and it does help you get the best out of the footage that you wanna get out of a Sony a7 IV. And next is this thing. This is a CF Express Type A card, the Sony Tough card that only really has two sizes that are even reasonable for using on this camera. The reason why I have an elongated side when I talk about this card is it's the most expensive memory card that I've ever purchased. Now the CF Express card, especially for the a7 IV, isn't something that's an absolute necessity, but if you are going to use the all intra S&Q 4K Crop 60, on your a7 IV, this is the only card that is going to work on it. Now, if you are somebody that wants to save a little bit of money and not pick up this card, and you don't mind not shooting that incredibly crazy, high quality, slow motion 4K footage, then you aren't going to need this card. You can get V90s, you can shoot in the normal 4K S, and you should be just fine. Now, if, but if you are somebody that wants to get the absolute highest quality out of your camera to use all of the codecs, all the bells and whistles, this is a card you're gonna need to pick up, and you're probably gonna need to cry after. 
So the next thing you need to know is how to program all of your settings into the new custom dial offered on the Sony a7 IV. Now what's cool about this dial is not only do you have the one, two, and three, let me just see if they get that in focus. Not only do you have the custom settings of like the manual one, two, and three, but but you also get a dial for your video mode, your photography, and your S and Q mode at the same time. So at the flick of a switch, I can change basically what I want my camera setting to be at, whether I wanna shoot photos, slow motion, or if I wanna shoot video, but also have the ability to set up three different custom settings for each mode. Now, a really good feature that cameras have been adding into the line of their cameras they have is in-body stabilization, which comes in handy because with smaller cameras, you are gonna get a little bit more micro jittery because it doesn't have a lot of weight to it. Now, the Sony a7 IV has two types of stabilization. It has your steady shot and then it has your active steady shot. Now, basically what steady shot is gonna be your normal mirrorless camera in-body stabilization, which does get rid of some of the micro jitters, but it's not incredibly proficient at getting rid of everything. It just helps get rid of the micro jitter that you're gonna get on smaller cameras. It also has something called active steady shot. Now, active steady shot is kind of like a beefed up version of the original steady shot the stabilization was offered in other camera bodies now it does have a little bit of a problem that's something you're going to notice when you're going to be using active steady shot so if you're somebody that is shooting handheld sports and things like that active steady shot works really well but make sure that you have the lenses to accommodate for that crop factor if you want to keep the same angle of view now for this last tip and this last thing that you should know about this camera i'm not going to say that i came up with this originally i actually followed a video that you can see right up into here and it talks about base iso for the sony a7 IV. now for somebody that has the a7s3 fx3 or the fx6 you know that they do have something called a dual base iso which essentially means that there's two iso values that the camera performs the best at in terms of mitigating noise which is a granular kind of grainy look that you see in your camera when you put your ISO in the wrong setting or you don't expose properly and it really doesn't look nice. Now the a7 IV also has a base ISO as well and it's s Cinetone and it's S-Log3. Now to reference this video, the base ISO that was found in S-Log3 when you're using the a7 IV is going to be ISO 800 and 3200. Now basically what that means is that the two settings that's going to work the best at in terms of noise performance is going to be 800 and 3200. That the s Cinetone base ISO is going to be 125 and 500. Now that's not really high and it's nothing to write home about but keep in mind also the s Cinetone is a pretty much what you see is what you get kind of look which doesn't require you to use incredibly crazy isos all the time at least in my experience that being said, this is the end of the video. And these are some of my tips that you wanna consider when you pick up the a7 IV after the fact. Now, a lot of people are picking up this camera. It's a lot more accessible than some of the other Sony cameras available because they're sold out pretty much everywhere. So if you are gonna pick up this camera and you are having a couple of problems, maybe look at this video and see if maybe the things that I recommended here is something that could help you out later on. Now, that being said, if you like this video, make sure you comment, you like, share, subscribe, do all the things YouTubers are rassy to do, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.